welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays. That's right. We have a Pedro. I know. I was Woo! like, oh no, he's back. <laughs> Man, that, you should have tuned in live. Pedro was not with us for a minute. Anyway, beautiful yeah. people. I was a wall. <laughs> I'm Ben Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And I'm um, back from the dead. One Pedro Mateo. So with his googly eyes, they were terrifying, petrifying, stupefying. <laughs> but we do enjoy them nonetheless. And everyone at home joining us live, uh, we're going to sit back, relax, talk about some Linuxy things that we found interesting. Starting first with the... Mm -hmm. Survivor of Scale. Yeah. 18, and you made it back. Everybody had yes. a party. You hung out in the house and uh, it didn't get canceled. That was kind of the like. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was the big one. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was that was wonderful. Amidst all the, the scare of the virus and all the other conventions um, canceling, uh, Scale must go on. And everyone was really good. They didn't come to Scale sick with colds or flus. So... Um, I I didn't get sick, <laughs> so and that was really wonderful, and it turned. We had a really good turnout, and nonetheless, we had over half the people that usually show up came. So that was very very good, and it ended up being a wonderful scale as a result of it. It had a very community feel, kind of like scale seven years ago, mm. and yeah. Okay. So it was it was just. We had a full Airbnb house, and it was so wonderful to have Jordan, Empty, and Matthew back again, and Steve Husband, as well as our patrons, Atomic, Shay, Linda, Alan, Kylinix, and Mir. And I had even a student, a new student with me, Kevin, who had a wonderful Kevin, time that at was his, his first, <laughs> yes, at his first scale. <laughs> and I got more interviews and lots of footage coming to LWW really soon. And make sure everyone to watch the LGC Scale 18X recap thingy from last th Saturday. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really, really fun. And it was a really fun show. And the other big thing is the Linux Chicks LA booth. Uh, we won the most passionate.org award. Yay! And actually, I have it right here. This time I figured I'd show it. Because <laughs> we do win an award every year since they've been giving out awards. <laughs> but we've no this is the first time we've gotten this one, mostpassionate.org. So I was right. pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, we worked, we always work really, really hard. So outside of sleeping in, Pedro, what have you been up to? <laughs> uh, basically, watching everyone around me not um, care about this whole health concern that's happening. <laughs> There's been a lot of emails going around. It's like, oh yeah, the, this might be a thing. One in five people might be working from home sick uh, or whatever the case may be. Um, and I look at everyone around me in the office. It's like, oh, no one gives a damn. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everyone's still showing up and stuff, right? And, yes, yeah. so it means I I don't get to work from home because if they're in the office, I have to be in the office. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> man, I've been busy with a bunch of stuff. Uh, I've been doing reshoots and stuff for other stuff. I'm more on that at 11. Uh, I am mm -hmm. doing something, for lack of a better explanation, because I can. Um, we're playing around with the, um, some audio interfaces, and I, I kind of have them tied together right now. I was like, I wonder if I can make this work. If you follow me on Twitter, you have a good idea what I'm up to. Mm -hmm. I was doing some bidirectional communication with um, ADAT Lightpipe between the audio box and the thread ripping system that we have. Sending everything out just because I was like, ah, that'd be an interesting, I wonder if we can make that happen. And we can. Apparently it's working right now. That's how we're coming to you. Video on that at 11, because I think I've come up with a use case of like, okay, maybe you want to do this for this weird reason. So here's how to do it. Um, just fun, interesting things. Uh, what do we have up first this week though? We got a lot of stuff we got to cut through. Mm -hmm. Linux laptops. Yes. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is a really good article that uh, um, Jack Wallen uh, wrote. Um, Linux distributions are starting to see the benefit of selling branded laptops, not only in marketing and helping to brand their distros, but the monetar monetary benefits as well. And this c includes the likes of, of course, the Pine Book with Debian, System76 with Pop! OS, the KDE Slumbook with KDE, and the Purism Librem with Pure OS, and of course the Dell XBS Developer Edition with Ubuntu. And, you know, marketing hardware with 
open source software installed to the average consumer is a lot easier a whole lot easier than just marketing the the ideals and use of free software and um, this was a really good quote that uh, jack had wrote what the average computer user quote would care about is that fancy laptop sold at a reasonable price you see consumers respond much better to tangible goods than they do ideals and something that requires them to do more work and honestly I think you have answered the age old question in the Linux community on how to market Linux, Jack. <laughs> that was, it's an excellent article. And it's kind of what I felt all along. You know, you put our software on, our wonderful software on hardware, and, you know, people see the bling bling. Ooh, this is pretty, and th this does this, and this does that. And, and you know, they're, eh, you know, Windows users don't really often care that Linux is more secure and, you know, open and everything, but they, they are drawn to the pretty laptops. <laughs> so... The pretty laptops and the availability of just having them on the shelf. That yes. goes a long way. It's like you go exactly. to the computer store and, oh, there's a bunch of computers. Oh, the operating on, uh, system on that one looks a bit different. But yeah, it's a laptop. It's mm -hmm. there. And if the price is right, the yeah, people will look at it. And it's, um, I really don't mind, like, all the different distros coming up with their own laptop and slapping their own distro on mm -hmm. it and just selling it. That's great. But I'm not entirely sure it will help with the whole quote-unquote fragmentation uh, issue. In fact, for those people that use that particular argument, mm -hmm. it may even be making things worse. <laughs> because those people don't know what they're on about. <laughs> well, it's good to see this type of traction just in time for, you know, laptops being a dying breed. But yeah, that is a joke no. that we've definitely made <laughs> on Saturday is when we'll see developers like, well, I don't have a Linux system to test on. I'm like, oh, you couldn't be bothered to go down to the Linux store to buy the Linux laptop mm -hmm. because, but yeah, man, that could be a very real thing. I think the only time I've ever seen a Linux box in a store, I made a trip to a Walmart because they were selling <laughs> Linux desktops. So I think it was Lindos at yeah, the time. Yeah, Lindos. I was like, I just and want to see this in person. It's like, oh, people are yeah. going to be angry when they get home. Um, that wasn't a good one. <laughs> yeah. Well, the netbooks <laughs> sold really well in the stores. And it was nice to see the, the you know, yeah, Xandros, Linux. and then Chromebooks. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah. about having that low, low price, which... Yeah. If we're being honest, that seems to be where we're lacking right now because, <laughs> like the um, the big fancy Kubuntu, uh, what do they call it? Um, mm. I don't even remember what it's called. The Focus, the Kubuntu Focus. Yeah, Focus. Yeah. Uh, that one is stupidly expensive. It's like okay, mm -hmm. that's gaming ter uh, gaming laptop territory right there, and it comes with Linux. Well, it. What are you doing? Any small shop, I mean, mm -hmm. anything boutique is going to um, have a premium to it. And that's just the reality of it. You know, we yeah. see things yeah. like with the um, Pandora and the Pyra and stuff like that. Yes. So this next company, I think, has done a good job. Of, yes. Uh, they do. The and they down. have, <laughs> yeah, they have the big high-end ones, uh, the tiny, really high-end ones, and the really cheap ones. But this one is about their, uh, I would say, far most common one which is the xps 13 we're talking about dell uk specifically mm -hmm. and they were like mm -hmm. oh do you wish your laptop came with a hashtag linux flavor well you can get the new xps 13 that doesn't have the up the nose camera anymore it's back at the top where it should be uh and you could just click the link and you in the operating systems you select can, you want to you <laughs> gotta make a comment and linux new i agree with you might want to pick something that doesn't look like you dropped it yeah, <laughs> it looks like the LCD is broken. It does. Oh, you're right, Linux Canero, good point. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you select um, Ubuntu and there you have it, the one configuration. That's right, you don't get to customize processor, you don't get to customize RAM, you don't get to customize SSD so size. So finally it... buy the Linux machine. That... Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the Linux machine. That's yes. it. <laughs> Why are we always getting gimped on choice? 
Hey, man. Aww. Hey, man. Linux, <laughs> Linux is all about choice, and there it is. There's your choice. One Linux. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the operating system. That's your choice. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to, oh, I can kind of see their point, though. If this isn't another one of the Dell oopsies, uh, like, hey, man, we're going to support this, but on this one. This configuration alone. Because right. I start thinking about we have to train support staff for these things. <laughs> so let's get one set trained up for this, you know, top end to the bottom for support. Yeah. And we're not worried about weird different configurations. So yeah. it's like, but the, the big difference in the configuration for people who buy XPS is it's like, okay, eight or 16, most people are going to pick 16 anyway. How about the 32 gig? option or if people don't yes. need an i7 how about giving us the i5 for a little bit lower price what damn <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so um yeah. how about uh, open source re-implementations of mm-hmm. things not games <laughs> Yeah, so thank you to Empty and Chat for this one. This is awesome. We have a new alternative to Silverlight, Open Silver, which is an open source re implementation of Silverlight that runs on current browsers via WebAssembly. Yay, wonderful, and it's about time. It's a little late, but <laughs> it did get here. <laughs> um, but what's really awesome is this is not just a plugin, but a whole development uh, framework that you can, you know, code with to make make apps with uh, Open Silver instead of using Silverlight. And now they'll work on all operating systems, including Linux. And it's it's really great. Um, no more need to install a plugin into Firefox and make websites think that you're using Internet Exploder. Yes, I said Exploder. That's <laughs> what so I call Internet Explorer. <laughs> or now Edge. <laughs> so anyways. <laughs> yeah, so that that was a thing. And uh, even worse, have it mess up your dependencies on your system via Pipelight. I loved Pipelight, but every time I installed it, it it ruined a lot of my dependencies. <laughs> so and I had yeah. to fix them. That was a thing. <laughs> Everything is better than Pipelight. Because yeah. <laughs> running a uh, extension on Firefox via Wine. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. The whole thing, the whole concept behind OpenSilver is great. But it has one big flaw. Which mm-hmm. is developers are going to need to redo their whole stack, yes, from Silverlight <laughs> and build it into Open Silver, which means this isn't gonna go anywhere. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Wait. Well. That, well. Then, um, if it didn't go anywhere, it'd be just like regular Silverlight. Yeah. Yeah. In that respect, they they nailed it. Yeah. They can maintain future yeah. parity, and I, I'm going to say this, man. This might, if you if you were pigeonholed in like a weird legacy situation that you inherited, okay, mm-hmm. maybe you're like, okay, maybe we could. Mm-hmm. Don't you dare make anything new with this. No, no, yeah. no. Silverlight needs to die. It is technically still supported by Microsoft, but it needs to die. Yeah. It's just, I mean, if somebody comes and they pitch you this, and they're like, hey, man, we can develop this and sort of throw them into moving traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Allegedly. Gone, gone <laughs> are the days of <laughs> using Silverlight with Netflix and all the things and having issues on Linux trying to run. I'm glad. I'm glad Netflix <laughs> dropped that. I know. I really know. <laughs> had to tango with it. it. Outside of, I think I tried to watch the um, Super Bowl. <laughs> we're broadcasting. Mm. Oh, that was the big yeah. Thing. Like, that we're was doing it thing. on the internet the one time. And I tried to make it work with Moonlight for three minutes. Like, I'm out. <laughs> I didn't work. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We got a new version of Jellyfin. Out there. Yeah, this is great. So the open source alternative to Plex and a fork of MB Jellyfin version 10.5.0 has been released. And, you know, this is one of the, the best FOSS media players available and has had a huge number of updates since we reviewed it on LWW last March. Wow. <laughs> yep. So, been a year. <laughs> yeah, it's been a year. So they, they improved the user interface theming and font integration in the web client. And there's now a new details page layout, which puts the artwork of your library front and center, which is really nice. It makes it look more modern and sleek. The new one looks very much like Steam. 
Yeah, it does kind of. Oh, yeah, good point, Vero. It does. <laughs> they <laughs> they also cleaned up lots of code. And here's what's really awesome. Support for AMD AMF hardware encoding, which is awesome. And full hardware acceleration for the Raspberry Pi. So now you can run Jellyfin on even the older Raspberry Pis and get hardware acceleration. Kudos. Yeah. Really, no, really no, awesome the, the to open see this source progress. attempt at Plex is... Uh... Pretty good. And mm -hmm. yeah, they are a fork of NB, so yeah. they still have a little bit mm -hmm. of catching up to do, but mm -hmm. this is looking very good. It, if you're building a media server, this is your thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to an extent, because this made me think. It did. It made <laughs> me think for a minute. I was like, oh, how long has it been since I powered down the Plex server? Ooh, it, it's <laughs> been a while. Because I, mm -hmm. I've gotten to the point where if I don't can't stream it on demand right then. I just don't watch it. Unfortunately, mm. but this, this is pretty neat. I mean, I'm down with that because uh, this has been and continues to be a very valid alternative to Plex if you don't want to dig with that. Yep. And I know those mm -hmm. feels, but it's lacking. It is lacking one thing that for me would make it usable and that's an Android app. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just having mm -hmm. a teeny tiny little app application that you load on your tablet or your phone. Yeah. Or your TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or your TV, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I look forward to some development in that area because uh, I wouldn't watch it on my laptop and going through a browser or anything like that. But it is there. This is workable. This is something that you can install and use right now. So... Keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just going to be really streaming awesome. everything because I'm one of those weirdos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not strain, but strain. It, it strain. comes close, yes. Uh, strain, yes uh, strain is an IRC client uh, for Linux built on GTK3. And you can tell it's GTK3 because that title bar is huge. <laughs> and, uh, yes. yes. Uh, they, um, they have uh, sort of done a lot of... Uh, lift up to your standard um, IRC client, you have like URL parsing, so you can get a preview of the URL that you're posting. Stuff that you've grown used to if you've been using your Telegrams or your Discords or your Slacks or WhatsApp, literally anything that people use nowadays, this sort of brings IRC more in line with that. So you brought GTK3 to the IRCs, you know, you just know <laughs> that the purists are going to hate it. It's like, I, I honestly, as a non-IRC purist, I'll use it because it's IRC. It's that thing that will probably always be there, but um, it looks a bit telegrammy, but that's all fine and dandy. I, I, I like it. Mm -hmm. I really do not hate it at all. You're yeah, judging me, Pedro. Well... It's going to look like a um, hacker chat. I can't use it. Oh. I'm sure they'll implement a the dark theme at some point, or if it is proper GTK, you just set the dark theme at the OS and it'll go book. Maybe they could implement the <laughs> yeah. Discord light theme. Everyone loves that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the blindness theme? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I love. <laughs> yeah, and like Pedro, Pedro was saying, I love that Earl preview feature. That's that's it's really slick. And I still love using IRC, but it is not so nice to have the bling that is available from other clients like Discord. So I'm I'm all for that. Uh, evolution in IRC is a good thing. <laughs> I don't think I'm complete. I'm not against it at all. I mean, one of my favorite things, genuinely, one of my favorite things is watching, um, you know, the kids, those who who just um, getting involved in Linux. Um, they how they screech with anger and confusion. You know, because they don't understand why so many Linux projects, the backbone of the communication and community is done via IRC. It's very upsetting to them. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. they, they will say, use Discord, use Slack, use anything else, Matrix. And, you know, like, nay, mm -hmm. we will not. <laughs> no. Because, you know. <laughs> Here's the thing about IRC. I mean, it, it's been around since forever. And at the end of the day, it's going to exist long after your discords, long after your slacks, long after, um, you know, insert whatever the new hotness is today. You know, hashtag mm -hmm. XKCD1782, as they even showed in this. <laughs> and I don't mind the new coat of paint on this. If you want to modernize it, that's cool. I'm down with that. 
Uh, and we have a Discord, but you know, we started out with an IRC and we've went through the, mm -hmm. the troubles of tying our Discord in with our IRC. Yep. So the we can live back and forth because yes, I do like some of the modern features of Discord, but there will always be the uh, just the IRC channel for that reason. Yeah. You know, it, it's cool if you make it sparkly. I just don't have to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If you don't like it, close yeah. your eyes when you use it. Huh? <laughs> Problem solved. Yeah. Next. There you go. <laughs> Bit of good news. I was excited about this. Yay. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is what we use to make our shows. DaVinci Resolve 16.2 has been announced. Boosted audio capabilities. Oh, Vin, you hate the audio system, Fairlight. And I still do. Um, <laughs> it is useless junk on Linux, but... But they did add something that made me moderately less grumpy. And that mm -hmm. was proper support for 32-bit B waves. And yes. that's good. Because <laughs> not that it was really a problem. And I was like, come on, this is what I'm recording in. Just let me bring this in so I can get those extra bits of data for extra, you know, clipping or anything like that. And I was like, okay. The I one thing that I didn't expect to get fixed, which I was just testing in one of the templates I have for a new show we're doing. Uh, I probably done something. It was probably my fault, but the being able to export, uh, still screen grabs was busted. Did this upgrade. Now it works. Um, there's a gang of just like little fixes and updates and everything's nice and happy. Try it out. If you have, it. there's the, you know, free version, which is fully featured mm -hmm. except for on Linux. You don't have support for, uh, MPEG four. For importing, ah, yes. you can get around that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, or if you have the full version and have the full version and everything works fine. I'm happy for it. Uh Black Magic, add support for control surfaces that you know are a little less than thirty thousand uh, dollars. yes. <laughs> that is always an issue. <laughs> I remember remember my uh, two thousand dollar jog wheel for doing video editing back in the day, and they're still that expensive now. <laughs> Although you can get inexpensive USB ones. <laughs> you can, no. but you just can't use them with the Linux with the DaVinci Resolve because it yes. only detects <laughs> one that's four thousand dollars or one that's legitimately thirty two thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, true that. And I was really happy with this also. Way to go, Resolve. Um, all these audio enhancements are actually far better than what is offered in Adobe Edition. So they're killing it <laughs> with the Adobe project products. And there's also some new editing features, including loading and switching timelines and improved media pool with faster copy and paste of clips. Uh, that is something I noticed was lagging in DaVinci. It was a little slow at doing that, but that has been greatly improved. And new color grading features, including smart filters and improved file format support for new cameras and standards. And yes, um, Linux based software is always good when it, when it comes to supporting file formats. <laughs> That's pretty good. And if Unless you're, you're Chrome OS. Hey man, hey man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess that would be a thing. <laughs> when it comes to video editing, yeah. this is the legitimate option. It's the only thing available. It, Closed sourced anyway, um, that you're going to be able to scrub through H.265, HEVC stuff, mm -hmm. if you have enough horsepower mm -hmm. to do it. And you can take advantage of CUDA and OpenCL for rendering, because mm -hmm. it was a game changer for the stuff I do here. Yeah. Simply because my rendering times went from an hour and 50 minutes to eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a, being able to, oh, I, let's just render out a copy and see how it looks. Then I'll make some changes. It's not like you have to make sure everything's just right or it's going to be one o'clock in the morning before everything gets up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say <laughs> good on that lot. Uh, we do want to keep it going with the video stuff. OBS Studio 25 Ooh. not release candidate four, not three, Pedro. No, not three. <laughs> I do like the notes uh, on three because they scrubbed the notes and just uh, yeah. typed in, don't download this build, it's awful. Oopsie. Go to yes. go download RC4 instead. <laughs> the biggest one I saw with this uh, that will affect uh, 
Linux users, you know, if you're using this to, like, we're using it right now to record the show, if you're streaming Twitch or anything in between, we're finally getting a browser source. That's right. You're going to get the browser. Yay, finally. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Linux is a real boy or girl. Um, <laughs> excited about that. If you want to play, you know, they don't have binaries, but you can get the source. Uh, pay attention to the build instructions because you got to download a little bit extra stuff before you compile it with a browser source built in. I think I did like last week or week before last just to give it a test. Um, another thing I'm kind of excited about with this, and it's not going to make it into the release candidate. It might get pushed out in the final product. We're finally going to see why you why two, which is packed mm -hmm. 422 support. Very and good. That's going to be interesting when you're looking at pushing out things like uh, DNX RHD, ProRes, and yeah, other things that can take advantage of yeah. that color space. And if you've ever played around with the DNX HD conversions on Linux uh, with OBS, it's implemented incorrectly. I've just not had the time to have that argument with them. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that that's going to help with that. Plus, it's going to have um, NV12 fallback support. And I know somebody was like, what did you just say? Trust me, it's good for Linux. That's all you got to worry about. <laughs> yes. That's all you have to worry about. Um, oh, they fixed a crash with a Pulse oh, Audio? Yes, yes. So um, that apparently was was an issue. And I do I, I, I have watched some streamers where that's happened, where Pulse Audio would uh, would crash on the Linux client. So I've apparently had more they crashes it. of removing an element from a scene than from Pulse Audio. Yeah, <laughs> I have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've seen it though on streams. <laughs> I couldn't remember tell you the last time OBS crashed. Yeah, no, yeah. it's actually been a while, but uh, yeah, no, but I couldn't make it reliably crash if I removed an active element from a scene. If I oh. hit it before removing it, it'd be fine. But if it was active, remove. <laughs> I can make it reliably crash. That's not the question. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they did fix a bug. Um, I don't know if it's in the release candidates. There was an issue if you had your uh, Black Magic capture cards, mm -hmm. like uh, the deck links, because Pedro, you have uh, one of the um, yeah, earlier the ones. Intensity Pro. Yeah, the intensity, mm -hmm. the original Intensity Pro. If you don't have anything synced to the output and you click go to the desktop with you, <laughs> ask me how I found Makes that. Makes sense. Out. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> So that's going to get fixed. Uh, we have one last little bit, though. Yes, you did a thing. Ladies well, and gentlemen. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a thing, man, all by myself, because I do things sometimes. Uh, this is the first episode of Interfacing Linux. This has been up for patrons for like a week or two. And what is it, man? Hey, if you want to get into home recording on the cheap, I'm here to help. You know, <laughs> I'm going to do what I can to take some of the mystery out of what works and what doesn't with Linux. It's kind of a little goal I have. We're going to be covering uh, sound checks, latency tests, detailed breakdowns of uh, Jackbox's list. Hey, man, if you want to build what we're using right now, there it is. There's your parts list. And uh, yeah, I ran into an issue. You know, see, so here's all the uh, round trip latencies. And we're going to be running through not just FireWire stuff. We're going to be doing modern stuff, USB interfaces. Because if you go on the internet right now and you try to figure out, hey, man, what works, what doesn't? Good luck, because you can end up like at Fado, which you're looking at threads from like 2013. You don't know if that's going to work on a modern system. And then you'll end up in a mailing list and somebody's like, yes, totally works. Immediately followed by this doesn't, nothing of this works. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I want to simplify it because I, I was in a position earlier last, well, later last week, uh, this dude, Adam Curry, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's accredited. Yeah, now. Yes. <laughs> you know, people say he invented podcasting. So that was kind of a thing. And he's like, man, I would really, I would totally use Linux for our recordings. I use Linux for everything else, but there's not a good multi track audio solution to it. I was like, wait, what? What? Hi. Uh, Hi. <laughs> um, yeah. Here's a screenshot of something that I use all the time. It's called Outdoor. To which later, you know, he hit me back and he's like, can I use my Motu with it? Mm. I didn't have a legitimate response because I could send him some like, hey man, maybe MK1, MK2, I don't know. Do you got USB? Do you got Fire? I 
don't have any of the units right now. And it's going to take me a while to do this, kids, because I'm just doing this out of my own pocket and I'm buying what I can off eBay. But yeah, that's why I really wish I had a, yes, this is everything I've tested. This is what, this is what works because that's a good get for Linux. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When That'd you get the guy awesome. who is accredited to like creating yeah. what we do, be like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I don't want that to ever happen again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to do what I can, man. Uh, and Yay, we're then. still going to cover like YouTuber interfaces. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, use this as a sound card. I'm like, I really wish you did. And we're going to do mic tech uh, test. I got some new microphones coming in. And um, yeah, I'm just going to try to get one out a week. Uh, there's a new one up currently right now for patrons if you want to go take a look at it. And there's one following that, which is going to be a fun story of failure. Mm. Failure. <laughs> and I just broke it down as simple as I could, man. Green chair. It works. Yellow chair means it works. But hey, man, you, know, my, you might have to do a little extra work. Red, go ahead and figure <laughs> out what that means. I have faith in all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yes, yes. Well, it looks like that's it. I think it's time uh, before we get to the pie. Mm-hmm. Since we don't have any particular Microsoft stories, we need to thank some people. Mm-hmm. Thank yeah. uh, all of you, lovely, lovely viewers who join us live every single week for Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. And of course, those of you watching on the uh, final produced version or listening, as um, the case probably is, uh, thank you. Every single one of you, you're the reason that we do this. And if you'd like to help us, LinuxGameCast.com, there's a little support button that you can click. It's awesome. It's amazing. Don't. Many don't different click ways it. to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> many, many different ways to. You gotta be careful us, when but... you click that button, man. Because some people messed up, uh... clicked that button, ended up in like a uh, Airbnb in LA last week. I'm like, well, how did this yes. happen? <laughs> Sure that did. can happen uh, in and around early March uh, every year. That can happen. <laughs> if it happens to you, run. <laughs> Otherwise, you might meet no. Jordan. Hey, oh, <laughs> all of you are awesome. You're the reason we're doing yeah. this show. You're making it possible. <laughs> and we just like to stop every week. And thank you. Uh, we got a couple of shout outs uh, to give this week. Yeah. Uh, up first, I got Haplo, who just uh, yes. made me, Woo! Made me Woo! laugh a little bit because <laughs> Haplo's like, man, I can't make it to scale. Arr, you know what? I'm going to up my Patreon pledge. Guess. Yeah, his <laughs> his work wouldn't let him come to scale because of the virus, so he couldn't at the last minute get his flights here and, and get it rearranged. So that was just really sad. He was really upset. And as a result of that, me and Steve husband got tons of swag for him. So he has lots of swag coming. Going to be swimming <laughs> in sticker suit, man. <laughs> yes. In Pedro, you know, Saturday we were reading a little bit of hate mail on... Um... Linux Gamecast yes. Weekly, and somebody wrote in, yeah. like, yo, uh, mm-hmm. uh, what a chat. And I'm like, yo, we usually <laughs> spend most of our time in Discord now. The other six yes. days a week, that's one of the perks you get for kicking us a little bit of coin on Patreon. And we're like, yeah, but we, we got IRC, it's completely open, you know, and we're tied in, so you can talk to us. Mm-hmm. And Corey's like, hey, man, I like show. I've been listening to you guys for a little bit. And uh, boom, I'm being your patron. Yay. Corey, thank you, Corey. Woo, Corey. <laughs> thank That's you so really much. Cool. And you got yeah. gifts, didn't you? Yes. So Shay and Linda <laughs> gifted me this cute penguin corn <laughs> that Linda made for me. That to is give genuinely me the most horrifying thing I've seen today. <laughs> yep, so it cute. looks like it's in pain. That looks like Aww. the corona. <laughs> So it was a penguin, and she made it a penguin corn because penguin corns are hard to find, and the unicorn is our spirit animal as well as a penguin. So she made this for me, and I love it. Do you know it. what else unicorns are? <laughs> Extinct. Happy magical creatures. <laughs> Interesting way to pronounce flammable. That's why they went extinct. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they were so flammable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're yeah. gone now. Just poof, man. All at once. Aww. <laughs> no. Um, but He's seriously. So cute. Thank, thank you. Um, everybody's making Aww. this nonsense that we get to do and the fun <laughs> that we get to have each and every week. But yeah. time for some diabetes. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh whipped cream, Ben. <laughs> And we need a la mode too. I can There's no ice cream say there. I've never had that. So awesome. Love it. Mm. <laughs> uh, pretty sure Ven would die from all the extra calories in the milk. That'd be but, like you uh, go for yeah. a jog. 
<laughs> this one is the Pi open source uh, laboratory imaging robot. And it's it's a camera that's uh, mounted on a little frame like the uh, person there is doing. And then it goes through specific coordinates on a base that they built with some... Um, I'm going to say some limiters, some dividers. Um, so you have little squares, and all of them uh, have their own coordinates. So let's say you wanted to use a camera to uh, tell exactly how a bacterial culture is growing mm. and whether or not uh, it's being resistant uh, to antibiotics, which is like the sole purpose of this particular laboratory, trying to combat... Um, any kind of uh, microbiology that is resistant to antibiotics. You kind of need it to not be resistant mm -hmm. to antibiotics if you have any hope of it doing its job. So they set up a pie with a very, very neat uh, open source system, which is uh, being hosted on GitLab. And it's the um, Polar, uh, the, again, Pi Camera Open Lab um, imaging robot. And it's, that's amazing because, uh, and they say at like the, the end of the article in the Pi website, it's, yeah, instead of getting like highly specialized, very, very expensive hardware, we can do this with a Raspberry Pi, some 3D printed parts, a camera that's compatible with the Pi, which are pretty accessible, mm -hmm. and open source uh, software. That's amazing. That yes. is actually amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. Very good job. <laughs> Yay. Maybe the Raspberry Pi will uh, will save us from the COVID virus. <laughs> and Linux. <laughs> I think that that's very yeah. really cool, man. It just makes me want to like uh, find somebody else to talk and let me using their CNC machine. Uh... <laughs> Steve husband? Those things are expensive <laughs> when you break them. Uh, yes. <laughs> Dude. Uh, if you know anything that is Pi related, Linux related, or maybe you just want to chat with us, Pedro, how are you going to go about doing that? Well, uh, there are many ways you can do this. You can um, do the Jill way, which is get everyone in a house at the <laughs> point in time where there's this major pandemic happening, but whatever. <laughs> we'll look the other way this time, Jill. Don't worry. Uh, but the best way is you go to linuxcapecast.com, you hit the contact button, and pick LWDW from the little show box. Then you fill in the form and, yeah. Let us know what you think of the show. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think of us. Mostly because I really like reading stuff about myself. Because Pedro will I'm argue with you. Narcissistic. Awesome. <laughs> 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 All right, beautiful people. We're going to roll the credits, get out of here, but we'll see you next week. Uh, sounds like a plan? Yeah. yeah. All right. Nothing cut Yay. on fire. So there's still plenty of time. We We're doing good. A minute. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Yay! Love the music. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yay! Hooray for Ben! Hooray for Pedro! <laughs> Go on, hooray for Jill! You can do it! Hooray it's okay. for Jill! Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you to our wonderful oh, new advisor, Haplo. Haplo. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! We love you! <laughs> and our executive producers and producers. You're awesome. Seriously. Mm -hmm. You're all awesome. And yeah, the, the, this show, once again, made possible by you lot. Uh, crazy, crazy Patreons. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Aww. And welcome in chat, Lynn. Uh, she's a, a friend from Scale and Jupiter Broadcasting. So good to see you in all here. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Yay. We love you. Ha <laughs> ha